Oh, good morning, everybody. This is Matthew Kent, and uh, welcome to my daily vlog. I said good morning, realizing full well that you might not be watching this in the morning because it's a vlog, but good morning anyway, and uh, welcome outside with me. I decided to hang out outside this morning, do a little bit of reading, and, and shoot my videos out here. Uh, first of all, the lighting is <laughs> a little better out here in the morning, um, but also, you know, uh, nature is just a, a nice place to sit and think, and you know, I don't think as uh, modern human beings we get outside into to nature enough. Uh, and that's actually probably a, a pretty significant problem in terms of uh, mental health. Um, I don't think being inside all day is, is good for us. Anyways, one of the things that you can't help uh, think about in terms of uh, nature, when you're out in nature, is just how, how fleeting everything is, you know. Uh, realizing that when I walked out here the the wonderful light quality of the sky and there's some pink over there that's actually almost gone and there's some pink back there that's actually almost gone um, you know that's all gonna be completely gone you know in just a few minutes and uh, you know so things are constantly changing constantly you know the seasons even I'm, I'm looking around at my yard now and just thinking that like man in just a few weeks uh, I'm going to have to be mowing this like once a week because it's going to be growing so fast. And so change is inevitable. Um, and then also, unfortunately, that means that everything that you see has an end. And that includes uh, your, old, your own life. Yes, I am talking about death. Uh, sorry to be such a downer. But, you know, in terms of, you know, should you think about death or not? Uh, first of all, two different things that I'll say. One, it gets back to the whole debate about... Um, you know, should you just focus all your, your time and your energy and your thoughts on, on thinking about the present? Uh, and actually, I think no. Uh, so I, I completely relate to the notion that you don't want to dwell on the past all the time and you just don't want to hopelessly dream about the future. You want to be in the here and now because this is where life is lived and you want to savor every moment. Yes, amen, I'm all for that. But uh, I think that in terms of thinking about each of those three tenses, past, present, and future, there's benefits and, and there's pitfalls. And so, for instance, with the past, one of the benefits is you can uh, reflect back on the good memories. And if you're just doing that personally, I mean, it can just be a wellspring of gratitude uh, that just, you know, helps you out, lifts your spirit, that kind of thing. Uh, or if you're doing it together with somebody that you share those memories with, it can really be something that, uh, you know, reminiscing can bring you closer together. And so there's there's pitfalls, um, but there's benefits present with, with each one of those three things. And so, you know, should you think about the future? Should you think about the fact that you are going to die? Um, well, I think there's nothing wrong with thinking about the future. Uh, the second point that I think is important to make is it's good to have perspective. Uh, and, you know, just what I mean by that is if you ever stop to think about, okay, how long, best case scenario, am I likely to live? And, you know, how old am I right now? You can calculate how many years do you have left? How many months? How many weeks? How many days? Uh, and so when you begin to see your days as numbered, one sort of thread that, that stands out uh, among many successful people is that they do have this sense that their, their time is limited and that they need to get something done right now. Uh, so too often we, you know, procrastinate, we push things off, and, you know, things that we want to get done, you know, whether they're, they're hobbies or uh, some kind of life transformation thing, like, you know, sculpting your physique or going on that diet or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, it could be, a, you know, an enterprise, like starting that business. Uh, we, we put things on doing that art. We put it off and uh, we do it, you know, just kind of thinking, well, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow uh, or I'll do it sometime in the vague future. I'll do it when all the stars line up. Here's the deal, the stars are never gonna line up. Uh, it's always going to be a bad time to do something. Uh, and so for instance, I started my blog finally after you know too long doing this kind of procrastination. Uh, I started my blog at the worst possible time, right after my daughter had been born. Uh, at work, we were implementing a new enterprise software. Somebody had just left uh, whose job I was taking over for uh, a lot of the responsibilities. And uh, it was sort of uh, stressful at work because I was, you know, out of my zone of competency and just feeling like I couldn't even do my job. And then there were these impending changes that were frightening. And then, you know, at the home life was, was chaotic. Uh, it was just absolutely the worst time. 
but th there's no good time, so you, it doesn't matter if it's the worst time, you might as well just start. Uh, the other thing that, you know, about this is, you know, I mentioned this yesterday, human beings tend to overemphasize what we can get done in the day, uh, and, you know, see, so put this big optimistic to-do list together and you get one item or two items done. But we tend to underestimate what we can get done over longer periods of time uh, with consistent effort being put forward. And so, you know, you can get a lot of your dreams done, but it's going to take a lot of time devoted to them. And so, man, you better get started now. And if you see that your days are numbered, uh, that might help with that. Uh, so anyways, those are my thoughts, like not to bring everybody down, but you know, the, the fact of the matter is it's a fact of human life. You're not immortal. You're going to die. And you have only so long uh, to make things happen. It's one of the reasons why, by the way, I would extremely highly recommend, uh, you know, clarifying what you want out of life. So Sarah and I, uh, my wife, Sarah got together and we had uh, a big discussion over a date night, uh, sometime back in January where you know we asked ourselves really deep questions like in 10 years where do we want to be where do we want to be living what kind of house do we want to be living with who do we want to be living with are we just going to have our two kids are we going to have more kids is one of them going to be adopted what what do we want out of life how much money do we have how much money do we spend what do we spend it on are we are we having nice vacations do we have a nice wardrobe nice furniture what's our priority and so, you know, we, we, we then, after that conversation, I wrote up the whole thing uh, in my bullet journal. I called it our, you know, our 10-year plan for a remarkable life. Uh, you know, it's that kind of conversation that helps clarify what you want out of life. And I think too few people ever have gotten specific. You know, they, they have vague, general, oh, you know, I would very much like to be rich. Um, that's not really meaningful. And, you know, I saw a quote the other day that, uh, life tends to reward the specific ask and not the vague wish. And so it's something I think everybody should keep in mind. Uh, your days are numbered. Uh, you need to make the most of your time. And the very beginning, the very first step of that is clarifying what you want. Have you clarified what you want yet? And if you haven't, when are you going to do it? Keep watching. Thanks for watching. Keep watching. Hopefully I'll have something good for you tomorrow. <laughs>